What is up, party people? We are back again. We're going to be talking today. We're going to go back into 8.8a, which is describe components of the universe, including stars, nebulas, and galaxies, and use models such as HR diagram for classification. We're going to dive into the HR diagram today. But first, I want to go over the life cycle of a star. And you can see it right there on the screen. And that is more geared towards 8.8b, which is recognized that the sun is a medium-sized star near the edge of a disc-shaped galaxy of stars, and that the sun is many thousands of times closer to the Earth than any other star. We went over that with the last lecture when we talked about the universe and characteristics of the universe and how our, the reason why we feel this thermal energy from our star, which is really average compared to all the other stars, is because of its location and proximity to us. I mean, it is the center of our solar system. So that is our star and it's, you know, we've named it the sun. So, you know, that's the, and it's, many thousands times closer to us than the next closest star, which is Proxima Centauri, 4.2 light years away. So let's jump right into the life cycle of a star. So we start, you know, we talked about nebula, and today you guys are going to do something in class about nebula. But, you know, that's where stars are born, the birthplace of stars inside a nebula. Very testable information right there. There, you can always expect something on the star uh, test, haha, <laughs> pun intended, um, to th that will point to a question on nebula. So nebula is where it's born, and two things can happen depending on the size of the protostar. You know, the, the one will have more mass than the other, and once it really gets going, one could be a massive star because of the mass that it has, and one could be an average star. And based on the mass of stars, it can go down two life cycle paths, if you will. And this is from what we have so far in our, um, you know, in our scientific findings. So we have the the life of a massive star and the life of of an average star like our sun. So let's go through the life of our sun. So uh, uh, right now, our sun is middle-aged. It's about um, 4 billion years old, and you know it, it, we're about halfway through its, uh, um, its fusion from hydrogen to helium. So it's an average star. The next step in about three, four billion years, our star will puff up and become a red giant. And at that point, it will take, uh, engulf, if you will, the first three planets. Uh, that's the hypothesis that it will engulf the first three planets. So that would be our Earth will be destroyed at that point when it finally becomes a red giant star. So we've got about that much time to get off this planet. So make sure our junior scientists get to work and, um, you know, make that happen so we can uh, travel at the speed of lighter faster and get up off this rock. Anyway, from that point, it starts shedding its lining and then it becomes a planetary, what's that word? Nebula. And we know that's where stars are born within nebulas. So as our star is dying, and becoming a planetary nebula, and then from there shedding its, you know, uh, shedding its gas and and dust, and finally becoming a white dwarf, and then eventually a black dwarf when it finally runs out of its last bit of energy. But we do know what we know about white dwarf stars. They they're not very bright because their size they're they're super small, but because they are at that point, they are running and burning their gas so fast they're hot stars. So their temperature is high, but their brightness is low because of uh, its size. It's, it's very small. And then, so that is what happens with the life cycle of an average star like our sun. Now let's talk about the life cycle of a massive star. So, you know, that um, you're talking about... Uh, Big giants, uh, big stars on the main sequence, massive stars, very bright, very hot stars. 
once they go through the majority of their life, they will puff up as well, but this time they become a red supergiant, which is so much bigger than just a regular red giant. And they have so much mass that instead of becoming a planetary nebula before it, it, what will happen in, in their case is that they will explode into a uh, supernova, okay? And we have, we've, if you look on uh, NASA websites or different other space websites, we have, there are great pictures of supernovas. And I think there's another star that's going to be, if it hasn't supernova yet, there's one that they're watching that will be supernova going through that process soon. So we should even have even more great pictures of what a supernova explosion looks like. But after that, one of two things can happen. For the stars that did, for the massive stars with a little less mass, they will become a neutron star, a very, very small star. And then those that had enormous mass, they will become a black hole. And that's really the end of it. I mean, we can, I can go into details about those things, but in eighth grade, for eighth grade science, you don't need to know the details. You just need to know what specifically happens. They will get, as you move on through your education, you will um, get more information, more in-depth information on these events and you know these the characteristics of these events so that is the life cycle start let's dive into the hr diagram now because the hr diagram helps us classify these medium stars and the massive stars so this is a great graphic, a great picture of the HR diagram. You will have one that looks a lot like this uh, for your star test. That's part of the tools that you get so you can um, be successful on your star test. Anyway, forget the horizontal branch that you see in the middle of it. That's not information that you, that you need. However, the rest of it is. So first of all, let's look at it like this. You got just like in math, you have an x axis and a y axis. So, in this case, your x axis is here on the bottom, and this is temperature, and uh, up here on the top. So, we pretty much are calling both of these uh, lines your x axis. And instead of how you read a book from left to right, in this case, the temperature increases right to left. That's correct. Look at the top where it shows the temperature. You have 3,000 uh, Kelvin here in this whole line that goes from the top down. All of these stars that you see here will be 3,000. And then right here, 4,000, spectral class K. And then we have 5,000, spectral class G. This is where our sun is located, right about here. As you can see, very average, very average. And look at the luminosity, one. And we have made our star one. So our star probably sits right here where you can see the mouse. That's where our star sits because it's at about 5,500. But anyway, that's spectral class G. And as we continue to go from right to the left, what you're noticing is the star's temperature will be increasing going this way from right to left. The star's temperature is increasing. Now, a couple other things I want you to pay attention to. Check this out. As we go from right to left, look what's happening with this main sequence. 90% of the stars you see in the sky, 90% of stars in the universe will fall in the main sequence halfway through their life cycle. This is the main sequence here. And what trend do you notice as you go from the right to the left? What do you notice about the main sequence? That's right. Check this out on the, check the y-axis now. M absolute magnitude, also known as luminosity, also known as brightness. As you move from the right to the left, 
look at how the brightness of these stars increases. So with, as far as stars are concerned, as the temperature increases, so as the size increases, that also goes with temperature, especially when you're talking about the main sequence, and brightness. So stars are categorized by their temperature and brightness. Stars are categorized by their temperature and brightness. That's a very important piece of information that you need to have as far as HR diagram is concerned. So there are four main groups of stars on your HR diagram. We have the, the bulk of the stars fall right here in the main sequence. We also have giants which our star here will eventually puff up and become a giant. So look what just happened. It went from a 5,500 temperature star, its brightness in increased, but its temperature decreased. The reason why its brightness increased because the star became so much bigger. That's an important point to understand. And then if you want to continue with that point, if you think about another giant star that people know a lot about. It's called Betelgeuse. That star is only about 3,000. So it's like more than 2,000 degrees cooler than our star, but it's so much brighter. I mean, it, literally, it's almost double the brightness of our star. And the reason why is because it's so big. So these are important concepts for you to understand. So anyway, we have the main sequence. That's the first main group. The second is the giants. As you can see where the giants are right here, this is the giant group. They are not very hot stars, but they are big stars. And that big means bright. And then we have supergiants. So with these stars here on the bottom half of the main sequence, when they go into the next stage of their life cycle, they become giants. These over here are your bigger stars in the main sequence. And when they go into their next part of the life cycle, they become supergiants. Think back to the life cycle of stars that I just showed you a little bit ago. They become super giants. And then the giants, once they shed off that lining and they become towards the very end of their life, they start burning super hot but become very small and they turn into white dwarves right here. So what, if you were to describe white dwarves, how would you describe them? as far as the way we categorize stars. I'll just give you a, a moment to think about that. How would we describe them? Well, this is the temperature. And what do we know about when it goes from right to left? It increases. So these stars here will be hot. What about the brightness? That's right. We would call these dimmer stars. They're not very bright because if this is the average line here, we know that they are not very bright. So you can actually break this HR diagram into quadrants. So you draw a line right down from the center and draw a line from the center all the way across. And here's how you can do these quadrants. So up here in the top right, we call these not very hot, cooler stars, but very bright. On the left, very bright, very hot. Bottom left, we call these very hot, and dim, and we uh, bottom right, we call these not very hot or cooler stars and dim stars. So you really can think about it, break it into quadrants, read what the x-axis and read what the uh, y-axis gives you, and, and it doesn't matter. You can They can give you different HR diagrams. Major, maybe they won't put anything here Maybe there will be, it won't say absolute magnitude on this side. Maybe it won't say luminosity over here. Maybe they will flip the spectral class and the temperature. So the spectral class will be up here and the temperature will be down here. It doesn't matter. They could put cows on the bottom and wild turkeys on, uh, on the y-axis. 
you now know how to read an HR diagram regardless of what they write on the x-axis or the y-axis. To sum it up, as you move from the right to the left on the HR diagram, the stars increase heat. So all of these stars in this band right here are the hottest stars known to man. And as you go from the bottom to the top, it's like the dimmer switch in the kitchen. You start to turn it up and the, and the lights start low. And as you continue to go higher and higher with that dim switch, they get brighter and brighter. And all of these stars on the top are the brightest stars known to man. And my friends, that is the end of your life cycle of stars and HR diagram lecture. That's it for now. We'll talk soon. I'm out.